have the pleasure of calling good Sir Umpo Sadiki. Um, our good Sir Umpo Sadiki, please approach the stage. He is the Group Managing Director for Merchant Service Africa, responsible for strategic planning and execution, business development and value propositions for merchant partners, payments industry veteran of over 15 years of executive experience, um, has worked prior joining the network uh, BankServe Africa, where he was Chief Product Officer, a member of the executive team across a number of product verticals, EFT, cards, real time, a true fintech leader, previously worked at NetBank and Deloitte, and holds a bachelor's degree in science and an MBA from WITS. Please give us, please everyone, give a round of applause for good Sir Mbo. Thank you. Thank you for having me this morning. I, I'm going to just give you a bit of our thoughts from a, from a fintech perspective and how banks and fintechs are partnering uh, to really build uh, and digitize this payments infrastructure across only, not only South Africa, but uh, across the African ecosystem. So really, you know, the, 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 the idea of this 20-minute discussion is that you walk away here with some, you know, high-level shift in mindset around what role does fintech play in, uh, in, 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 the, in the digital payments uh, uh, ecosystem. Uh, yeah, so where does this all begin? I think ultimately, the, and, I, and I had that in the earlier conversation, that the, 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 the prevailing uh, uh, thought with fintech is, is normally that fintech is the, the, the wraparound, if you want to use that, right? It's the guys that do all the inno innovative stuff, it's the guys that are really the, the mavericks that don't follow the rules that uh, require the banks uh, to support them through, you know, either, you know, uh, 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 you know, compliance with, with, with respective regulations or actually ensuring that they deliver safe and secure solution. But if you really tr look uh, through it, it's not necessarily the case. I think uh, uh, FinTech has really uh, uh, shifted over the years from being the simple on the, on the front wraparound guys, the innovative guys, to actually being part and parcel and the core of how transactions, how payments, uh, it's enabled, uh, uh, you know, within not only in South Africa, but also in the, in the African mar uh, markets. Now, if you think about it, it's really, you know, we're not only facilitators of payment, we are now embedded in the payments ecosystem. And, and I'll share some ideas throughout this discussion. Why do I believe that we play such a critical role in the payment infrastructure? And, and a lot of it, as consumers yourselves, as, uh, as people that use digital payments, you don't even notice it. You just consume it and, 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 uh, and typically assume that, that is, uh, you know, it's being delivered by a bank or, or, or any of the traditional established players, right? But I think to first maybe understand is one also has to look at, you know, what are the, what does South Africa really uh, is challenged with, right? So South Africa is this, I would call it a paradox in the sense that we probably have amongst the best financial services infrastructure in the world, highly, highly scaled, highly modernized, uh, you know, and, and in most, I will say 99.9% .9 available, right? So one could easily say, hey, surely if you have such a world-class payment infrastructure, world-class financial service infrastructure, digital utility of payments should be very high, right? But we find that that's not necessarily the case, right? So yes, we've got a lot of people that are banked. Uh, I have you know, people in the room here who are colleagues with me. We used to get fascinated about the amount of cash that either gets withdrawn immediately after payday and, uh, or just the amount of cash that gets moved in and around the country uh, because you know, we looked at those statistics uh, at the time. So you have this ability to digitize but then customers are not, are not, are not really uh, embracing that. On the other hand, you also have quite a high penetration of smartphones, right, that, that are there. So you, I guess the combination of these three things tells you that uh, the ingredients are there to digitize payments. The ingredients are there to, 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 to enable consumers to progressively shift more and more away from cash, right? And maybe this is where, where fintechs uh, uh, come in, in the sense that, uh, you know, our role 
our ability of understanding this paradox uh, starts to create those use cases where we say, hey, you know, historically we would have just worried about just what sits on the front, but now we're going into the detail of, of, of the various use cases and say, how do we build solutions that truly will enable people to, uh, uh, to digitize? I always use this analogy that, uh, you know, our infrastructure, payments infrastructure, it's more like the highways, right? Gets you everywhere uh, and where fintech and, and innovators come in, working collaborate, collaboratively with, uh, with the established players, is sort of the byways, all of the, the, the regional roads, the off-ramps, that, and that's, that network creates a transportation system, and in this, in this, in this instance, it creates a payments ecosystem. So, and, and, and I think the, the point has been made is to say, you know, we, we, we're quite privileged as South Africa. We don't have to build from scratch. As I said in my, in, in my earlier uh, points, is that the ingredients are there. It's basically what challenges all of us is to say, how do we build a digital financial uh, infrastructure that serves all South Africans, bridges the gaps, creates access, uh, and ensure that we truly digitize and become a leader in the digital economy. There was a speaker, I think we mentioned it earlier also, to say there is a very important role that fintechs play, and that role is around you know, creating access for, you know, some reason or not, fintechs have this ability to reach areas that traditional incumbents have struggled to reach. It could either be our cost to service is uh, it's probably more you know, effective than what you get from traditional players, is that maybe we don't have the fear to go and reach those uh, 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 regional places. Maybe we see use cases that uh, uh, you know, typically a traditional player doesn't see. Now, I look at all of that and say it is an opportunity for South Africa and the opportunities and the use cases are still, are still quite there and, and it's amongst us. It's, I think the gathering like this creates that dialogue, it creates that forum where industry players connect and starts to, to unpack some of these opportunities, right? And it, it follows that then that, uh, you know, you go back to the earlier point that fintechs really is not about just the wraparounds, it's that we're playing a very active role in unlocking use cases and building the digital infrastructure uh, within the South African economy. And, and, I, and I'm always proud to use two examples because both are either I, I work there in the context of PayFast or you know, other guys who are competition where I've seen the role they've played in opening up digital payments and actually creating and laying that track uh, for the SA digital economy. You rewind, where we're 25 now, so it always, I always get confused, that actually 2020 or 2018 is uh, 17 years ago, right? <laughs> Sometimes I think it's just that the other day. You, there were places in South Africa in 2017, pre-World Cup, right, where you couldn't find a card accepting machine, right? Today, it's not even a thought. You rewind back the very same 15 years, Digital commerce in the context of paying online was only available to established players, hotels, airlines, and, uh, and a few others. Through the work that ourselves we've done, the, you know, some of the, 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 the fintechs we compete with, we've laid that digital infrastructure. A micro merchant can accept a digital commerce, whether through a pay by link or through a, having an established website, right? A micro merchant somewhere in, in, uh, in the middle of Limpopo or Eastern Cape or Northern Cape can accept a card payment and have it as an alternative for cash. And that infrastructure, through collaboration with established players, is what uh, fintechs have laid. So by the very nature of creating that infrastructure, you already part and parcel of the digital economy. You already part and parcel of what traditionally, if you think about ATMs, right? The ATMs infrastructure in Saab's definition, it's a critical infrastructure, right? If you if you don't have ATMs, you know you'll have <laughs> a big problem in this country, right? Now, if you don't have, in the sense that month end people can't withdraw cash, just say their whole infrastructure is down or you don't have cash. 
you will have an infrastructure challenge. If you cannot make payments, it becomes a, it becomes a challenge, right? Now, it's this infrastructure, uh, 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 you know, analogy, you know, it goes beyond what you see in South Africa. Uh, it, is, uh, it is also in regional markets, you know, north of our borders. I have the pleasure that we, we, we participate and deliver payments and, and, and support a number of our merchants in, you know, in a few other African countries where alternative payment methods are the, the dominant payment providers, right? Mobile money uh, is the leading payment provider in East Africa, in West Africa, you know, probably if you exclude Nigeria because Nigeria is primarily account to account payments, that whole infrastructure and its critical nature was not built by banks. Mpesa ecosystem was not built by a bank, right? But it's now a critical payments infrastructure uh, within the Kenya economy. And if Mpesa goes down, payments in Kenya stop, right? So again, just putting in some real life examples to, to really show you that the, the time to think of fintech as just innovators and not core to the, to the payment infrastructure, I think that is long gone. And, and it's, it's, uh, it's also being shown but, uh, by, by, I mean, this just gives you an example of what, what I spoke to you about earlier to say, you can have now a farmer making a payment, you've got opportunities where people who are you know, sitting in rural areas can now connect, make payments without, without any challenges, and that is the infrastructure that has been, that has been laid. I think the, the, the point I wanted to make was, you can see even the regulators, and we use our example here, where regulators are starting to accept the critical nature that fintechs play in the payments and digital payments e ecosystem. And by doing that, what do I mean? Is that not only have they developed regulations that starts to normalize, regularize, license fintechs, they've gone a step further that they have now uh, put out a consultation paper to industry around the full, this South Africa for example, the full scale licensing of any person that is a participant in the payment ecosystem, right? And that is a whole 360 shift from, hey, fintechs, innovators, you know, mavericks, will break the rules to say, hey, we want to bring you in-house, we want to regularize you, uh, we want to license you. And of course, we challenge some of that in the context of saying it's good to license, but you must balance that with the need for innovation. So the idea of licensing shouldn't burden, I'm not a bank. Don't license me like a bank. License me in an incremental manner that allows that risk is managed but it's managed effectively and I can still innovate and I can still, I can still deliver product. Before we kind of close, I thought I'd share some, some of our thoughts around where the next frontier is going in terms of role of fintech. And I think uh, AI and data is one of the most, besides uh, the, 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 you know, the engagement that happened earlier around uh, blockchain, you know, I'm sure there'll be, in a different panel, there'll be a huge debate around AI. But I think it's, a, it's, quite a, it's quite an exciting field for us from a payments and fintech perspective, especially in the area of fraud, uh, where today we are delivering solutions, we are consuming solutions that are utilizing uh, AI for, for, for real-time fraud monitoring. Uh, and, and, and why do you need that? I mean, we've evolved quite significantly from just being a single payment method provider as fintechs, but to a multiple met me uh, payment method provider. So your, the way you read, the way you analyze fraud needs to take into account that you're doing accounts, you're doing account to account payment, you're doing mobile money, you're doing card, you're doing instant EFT, you're doing vouchers, wallets. You need to be able to analyze and, 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 and trade that. And beyond, besides that, there's also opportunities that we can leverage AI for, for customized offers you know, in the B2B ecosystem. And I think it's an area that is still, that is still developing. And, 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 and again, that, 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 I think the fraud case is a very good one because we've seen that work, right? There's uh, good products out of uh, uh, Feature Space, uh, which is one of the entities I think recently bought by Visa, that has built quite a strong account-to-account, -account card, AI-driven uh, fraud monitor, monitoring system. So 
it's again uh, opportunities that we, we, we use to, to, to drive what, yeah. Now, I think the point is clear that, uh, you know, uh, the data that is used to power AI innovations needs to, you know, also, outside of that, we need security, right? And, and, uh, and to secure that, that's where uh, are things like, uh, uh, you know, cyber security come into play. And again, we very much aware of the growing imperative for cyber security uh, and its role in not only our securing our environments, but securing, securing our customers, secure, securing our customers' infrastructure to ensure that, uh, you know, the thing about financial services, it's a system of trust. If you don't have trust, you can never deliver financial services to any customer, merchant, or, or ecosystem. And that's why these topics around fraud, cybersecurity, are things that we take very seriously and embed in our, in our, in our infrastructure. Now, where do we see commercially things going? I think for us, things like unified commerce uh, are an exciting prospect. And what do I mean by that? The harmonization between in-store, in-person, single platforms, customers easily transitioning from buying online, checking out in store, uh, providing merchants the ability to manage both channels seamlessly are things that excite us and those are the next infrastructures that we're building and, uh, and creating ecosystems around that. We, we're looking at embedded finance, you know, embedded finance comes in the form of whether it's merchant lending, whether it's uh, uh, it's, uh, you know, buy now, pay later products from a customer point of view. So those are, I think, exciting things that we, we're working on. And those, again, five, six years ago, were ecosystems that didn't exist, which fintechs have introduced and are, are, are starting to scale. Good example, real life stuff. The customer, they need to transact. They need to buy their, you know, goods stock up and all that. Products like embedded finance are helping them with, with the right level of... Uh, of, of funding to support not only their business, which traditionally they would have been declined in a bank because they would have needed to carry a whole box of documents, which we don't need. I think the, the, the last piece I just probably want to cover, and, and maybe I'll skip this one, it's just this, uh, and I think it's a good view to, to just show that, you know, where fintechs think versus legacy banking infrastructure, for us it's about, you know, cloud is, uh, is a very important uh, pillar of how we build, how we scale, how we d develop, and how we deploy. Uh, it's all about real time, whether it's in payments, it's in settlement, it's in clearing, it's in data provision to merchants. So typically our merchants, you do a transaction, they log into their portal, they see it, it's there, right? We're now transitioning into, uh, uh, you know, real time settlements, automated workflows, so easy onboarding from an API point of view. And, and I think the last point is quite important and speaks to my point around security, is tokenized transactions to ensure that we do not leave any trail behind for possible fraud, not only to our merchants, but to, to their users, yeah. So what's the three imperatives? I mean, for us, is, as much as we believe we're part and parcel of the payments infrastructure, we wouldn't have done it without collaboration. So we don't beat down our partners that we partner with in the banking ecosystem. We embrace them, we collaborate, uh, but we collaborate in the sense that uh, open up, engage, allow us to co-create together and, and, and ensure that we scale and, and, and build uh, uh, scalable and secure infrastructure. And, 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 and I think that last point is quite important, probably for me, is that you know, innovation on its own is good. Access, scalability, reachability is probably the best form of innovation. And, and that's where companies that have gotten this right is the companies that are, are indeed succeeding. Right? I think that uh, closes it for me.